first things first, right? Mm. This whole world of celeb and showbiz. You've lived it and breathed it for years. For me, it's a passing interest. I'm, I'm more into economics than politics. And yet, I've known for two, three years that there was a scandal with an ITV involving Philip Schofield and a youngster, a real youngster, that was working on the show. So, if I've known about it for all this time, you've known about it forever, why only now has this story broken? Well, I think that's what's so shocking about this story, Nigel. It's actually not even about the personal life of Philip Schofield. You don't care, I don't care who Philip Schofield well, is well, sleeping with well, hang on, in hang his on. private life. Well, if it was outside of work... Well, no, that's what I'm saying. That, that, that's what that, I'm saying. That argument might be valid. That's what I'm saying. But, but, but this 18-year-old... Yeah. I'm, and you'll tell us more. But this 18-year-old was actually working on the same programme. So, I mean, there is a question about abusive position. Well, no, there? that's the point that I'm making. We don't care that Philip Schofield is gay. Uh, some people would obviously think that it was very wrong that he was cheating on his wife, who mm. had to live with his betrayal for so many years. That's an opinion. That's completely fine. But it's not a scandal. What is a scandal here is the fact that Philip Schofield met this very, very young teen, some people yep. say a when he was just a boy, uh, then helped get him work experience at This Morning, where he came in and he made videos and he met Holly. And as you say, those videos are all over the internet. And then apparently when the boy was 18, they began a sexual relationship. Now, I became aware of this when he was moved off the This Morning show, when his relationship with Philip soured and moved on to another show called Loose Women. And at that point, Nigel, everyone knew mm. about the story mm. at ITV mm. Daytime because the young kid was uh, very unhappy. He had gone through quite a trauma. And I went to ITV with the details of the story mm. in November 2019. I spoke to a guy called Paul Moore. He is the right-hand man of Carolyn McCall, the uber-woke chief executive of the organisation who used to be at The Guardian, and was told that this was just malicious gossip. So you saw there Eamon Holmes saying quite clearly, this is a cover-up. And to me, that's why this story matters. Isn't it funny? Because ITV are very keen to get rid of people. You know, Mm. uh, Piers Morgan, albeit a bit obsessive Mm. about Meghan Markle, I think, but clearly Mm. wasn't towing the line. He was gone. He was out. Other presenters. Jeremy Clarkson, Carol McGiffin. Yeah. If you don't so here's the, the woke line, so, you're out. Yeah, so here is this, here is this virtue signalling channel, ITV, who get rid of people for not towing the line. And yet, if what you say is true, and I don't disbelieve you for a moment, when it comes to a very serious allegation of what was going on within, chose to cover it up. Well, indeed. And why not just investigate in November 2019 mm. when this story was put clearly to them? You'll remember Philip later came out on TV and Damon in our interview, which is screening tonight, says that he felt tricked and ambushed into being part of a performance on television for Philip to come out when he now feels that that coming out was simply to help cover this. And the coming out story was to bury the story being put in a tabloid. Yeah, because a couple of days earlier at the National Television Awards, which was those awards, you remember Holly and Philip, they always used to go and get very drunk and then they'd turn up the next day, hung over on the sofa. That night at this National Television Awards, this poor young man, who was clearly troubled at the time, had got very drunk and spoke to Holly and Philip about what was going on, also spoke to various senior ITV executives and spoke to me that night to talk about his pain, about how he'd been treated. So to me, I I will stress again, I don't actually care about Philip Schofield's private life. It's about what this means about ITV as an organisation. Why are they prepared to protect a very high-powered star Mm. and not look after a clearly troubled young staff member. And there was no doubt about it. I mean, apparently, you know, taxes were Mm. taking this young man. Was it from ITV Studios to Schofield's apartment? Yeah, so Eamon reveals tonight, and it's an extraordinary uh, revelation, actually, that Philip would have something called Thursday playtime uh, with this young runner. (coughs) And then the next morning... uh, taxis would take 
the young runner from his house, Philip's mm. house, to mm. the ITV studio. So it seems quite hard to believe that if ITV had really investigated what was going on, because we should say, Nigel, they claim they did investigate. They say there was an investigation in early 2020. But again, that was two months after I first went to them with the story. And remember, this relationship had been going on for a good couple of years mm. by that point. Mm. Yeah, and the cover-up, and, and Eamon, by the way, I mean, he, he really speaks. I mean, he's really angry he is. about this, and that's because he was drawn into this whole coming-out Well, saga. then he was sacked. And then he was used, and, and then, then he was sacked. And he was sacked for saying something that was slightly outside of the accepted mm. wisdom of the time. So I can see the anger in Eamon Holmes, but there is a... It's interesting, isn't it? It, it, it isn't just Eamon Holmes against... Philip Schofield, you're involved in this. He mentioned Amanda Holden. He mentioned the doctor, Dr. Singh. Dr. Ranch, yeah. So it's almost as if it's Schofield v. the rest. And he keeps putting on he keeps on putting out statements. Well, yes, he said today there was absolutely no toxicity at this morning because there's lots of claims about this show being an incredibly toxic place place to work. I guess what I would say to Philip is that is it not pretty toxic that you have somehow got management to move your young bit on the side to another show <coughs> while he has some sort of breakdown simply so that you don't have to work with him every day. That is quite a toxic thing. Eamon actually has lots of other examples of the toxicity on this morning. But I think really what is critical here is what ITV knew, mm. when and who knew this and why they decided not to investigate. And as you say, they're a, pump, they're a public company, their share mm. price is expected no, no, to I mean, crash it, tomorrow morning. Yeah. And lots of people in television are saying, and they're not comparing the crimes in any mm. way, because we should stress Philip has, while he's admitted wrongdoing, he has said there was absolutely nothing illegal that went on. So yep. I just want to stress that. Yep. But they are saying that in terms of the cover-up, that this is the biggest cover-up in TV since the Jimmy Savile scandal at the BBC. And, of course, we believed that that would not happen. And I think what's really galling for a lot of GB News viewers, Nigel, is that ITV preached to us all the time. Remember during their coronation coverage, they were saying how terribly white the balcony was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there was no apology about that. All they seem to care about is BLM and inclusion and diversity. And they love to put out this picture of them as a holier-than-thou paragon of virtue and the home of virtue signalling, yet this was going on. Yeah. They knew about it, they were told about it by multiple people, and they said, you know what, this is all just a bit too hard to deal with because mm. we want to keep lovely Holly and Philip on the side. Yeah, and, and, and is it because... I mean, did they fear that losing Philip Schofield, losing the programme, would damage their revenue? Yes. So, as simple as that. That's what I believe, because otherwise, why? I mean, I yeah. said at the time to, to, to Paul Moore, the, the, the group uh, corporate affairs director of the channel, and I just want to be very specific so that people know this is not about rumour or hearsay. You know, I said it at the time. Mm. Why did you not yeah. investigate? And I will just make one other point, Nigel, because I think it's really important to say, because Eamon's been getting a lot of it too over the weekend. Mm. A lot of folk have said, well, if you knew about this, why did you not speak up? And all I would say is we tried. And while I was executive editor of The Sun in December 2019, I did write a version of this story which spoke about a young runner on this yeah. morning who had been moved on to Loose Women after a row with Philip. But I think it is worth pointing out the libel laws in this country really do damage freedom of the press. We have nothing like the First Amendment in the US and all of the time journalists in the UK who are trying to reveal wrong. And that's a threat. Yeah, and that, of course, is how Savile actually yes. in the end, for years and years yes. and years, people try to expose what because Savile everyone was doing. Knew. Because everyone but, but knew. But there were lots of legal threats. And yeah. where do you get the proof? Is there more to come out about Philip Schofield, in your opinion? I don't know. I don't know whether there is about Philip Schofield. But what I do know is there is much more to come about ITV yeah. and the toxicity. And ITV is a real rotten apple of a company. This has all happened under the oversight of Carolyn McCall. And I find it very hard to see, given the standards that she expects of well, the people working for her, how she can continue. So the programme this morning, it'll be scrapped and rebranded in your view? They're holding on to it for now and they're fighting to keep it. But it's where the viewers actually believe in it. And I have to be honest, Nigel, I, I tuned in this morning. And remember, this is meant to be a very happy show. Yeah. And I felt like, my goodness, 
that's the unhappiest place in the UK. But they were devastated. It's like the veneer wow. has been smashed. I think heads are going to roll. Dan, you've been intimately involved in this story. We look forward to seeing the full 17 minutes with Eamon Holmes at 9 o'clock this evening.